welcome to season five of Swiss Impact with Benedi. I'm Svieta. And I am Ben. The topic of season five is impactful investments. How can you make a difference with your capital? Our guests who are managing impact investment funds, business owners, thought leaders, will empower you to invest with impact. In this season, we will showcase various impact investment funds who are contributing to SDGs, better known as Sustainable Development Goals, as defined by the United Nations. There is no excuse. Shift your capital to create positive change in our world. Your children will be happier, you will feel fulfilled and make money. We will broadcast every Friday afternoon at 5 p.m. Central European Time here on Swiss Impact with Panergies. You get more when you give back. So always invest with Impact. Good morning, afternoon and evening to everyone. <laughs> Welcome back to our episode 18 of season 5 dedicated to impactful investment opportunities. Impact investing is part of the world and currently one of the most discussed topics is the war of Russia with Ukraine. I think it is absolutely clear that at Swiss Impact with Banerjee we only support peace and solutions for global challenges. Therefore we want to show today Russia beyond the war with Ukraine. Because many forget that there are still social entrepreneurs who have nothing to do with politics and trying to do good for the world and people. And I have news for our viewers. <laughs> <laughs> now, our programs are also available as apps on Android TV, Amazon Fire, Apple TV and Roku. So it's making it even more easier to find and watch us. Our invitation remains open to you, your friends and family to join and watch us on one of many, many channels we have. And all businesses who are looking for support or funding and consider yourself impactful are most welcome to apply or connect to us or connect with us. You can use the email address apply at iisolutions.ch. Great. Ben, I hope you prepared some politically correct and interesting <laughs> story for today. So before I won't start, I just want to spread the very happy news that Bolsonaro had lost the election in Brazil, meaning that Amazon Forest again has some hope. <laughs> wow, and yippee. <laughs> so can I share two short stories today with your permission? Two? Yes. Only, only today. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> to start with, we know that COP27 is starting this Sunday. And everyone is very critical, including myself, whether we are going to keep the, one, uh, the 2 percent change or uh, increase of the global warming with the present momentum and motivation of our political mm -hmm. leaders. There is no way we believe that the climate change will be aligned to the Paris Agreement with present situation. Right, yeah, I remember that, of course. But the way we are doing things, the temperature will most probably rise certainly above two degrees. Exactly, that was my point. But if we go back the time and remember that in the year 2000, it was calculated that the global temperature would rise with four and a half to eight percent by the year 2100. So it seems that we have come a long way. We have made a profound changes. And even during one of our previous interviews with the head of WMO, he even hinted at a global temperature change of 1.5 degrees centigrade. Of course, there is still a lot to, done, lot to be done. So please don't get me wrong. But we should stop and appreciate what we have achieved since 20, 2000 till 2022. Well, this is really true, Ben, what you're saying. We sometimes fail to stop and appreciate what we have, what we have achieved, and be pleased with what we have, especially in these dark days of war. Speaking of what of war, that was going to be my second point. Mm -hmm. You know how much I love reading history books, <laughs> <laughs> my favorite pastime. And what I learned is that often during the war, 
science and technology develops the fastest and usually after the war, people who are scarred and devastated with personal losses or who have been kicked out or forced out of their comfort zones want to change the world for the better. Look how beautifully the European civilizations and societies evolved and developed after the Second World War. I suppose you're talking about present war of Ukraine with uh, Russia. Exactly. So I sincerely believe that positive change will come out of this war too. To start with, look at the very, very powerful forces of good working inside Russia, which most of us in the West are completely unaware of like very innovative social enterprises. Absolutely. Today's guest is an experienced social entrepreneur, an expert who has been expert for decades in Russia in the sector of social entrepreneurship. With this, I'd like to welcome our not only guest of today, but also friend and colleague, Mr. Sergey Panamarev from Impact Investing Solutions. <laughs> welcome, Sergey. Hello. Hi, Ben Sveta. Very glad to see you. Same well, here. How are you? Where are you right now? <laughs> um, well, uh, right now I'm in Bulgaria. Yeah, uh, previously I lived in Russia. <laughs> but yeah, I have to leave it after the February. And uh, now I'm on my new journey. And uh, yeah, but 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 still, uh, I hope uh, to that during our conversation, I want to show you that uh, in Russia there are a lot of uh, people who do not destroy other cities but create uh, something new and help other people. So I hope it will be interesting for for you and for our viewers. Okay, but Sergey, Russia is an extremely big country. From where do you come from? Uh, I'm from Ural, uh, city Perm, it's just on the border between Asia and Europe. Okay. Amazing. I've been there, you know. <laughs> 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 All right. Sergey, let me quickly introduce you to our audience who maybe don't know you yet. So you are a candidate of political science, a PhD, consultant, researcher, expert in the field of social entrepreneurship. You are also been... Uh, a docent of Perm State National Research University for many, many years, expert of the Center for Civil Analysis and Independent Research, so-called Granny Center. You were also a leading trainer of the Social Entrepreneurship Laboratory of the Our Future Foundation, which is one of the biggest foundations in Russia. You also conducted more than 500 trainings and events for NGO leaders social entrepreneurs and government officials in Russia and Europe. So you're pretty known in <laughs> Russia, as it looks like. And moreover, you're also quite active abroad, attended 25 internship in 15 countries, including countries like USA, Great Britain, Latvia, Taiwan and others. And of course, you've been member of jury of various social uh, entrepreneurs competitions, the great engagement we you're <laughs> absolutely in our sector yeah that, that's right uh, this is uh, uh, that is why i always have a problem with self identification because i worked uh, in different sectors and i have a rather wide experience yes that's true Sergey, mm -hmm. would you share with us maybe your story you know how did you end up in the sector of social entrepreneurship in russia it's not very common uh, well, uh, yes, uh, I started my career 20 years ago from uh, non-commercial organizations. I went into youth uh, memorial, uh, maybe you know, uh, we uh, deal with uh, uh, history about uh, political repressions in Russia. I was, uh, started there as a volunteer. Later on, I continue it in research organizations, Granny Center. Uh, we realized, um, uh, organized different projects um, um, concerned about the cooperation between uh, civil uh, society institutes and the local authorities. Uh, and yeah, in 2018, I was invited as the leading teacher into Fund Our Future, <clears throat> into the Laboratory of Social, Entrepreneur, uh, uh, Social Entrepreneurship. Yeah, and uh, I studied 
uh, to manage uh, federal accelerators, workshops, webinars, seminars, and so on. So yeah, this is, this is uh, my way to social entrepreneurship and I really, really like it. It's one of my favorite sphere. Perfect. And, and in today's world where everybody, the, all the news and everything is full of Russia, can you tell us a little bit about what is the situation for sh social entrepreneurs in Russia today? Uh, yeah, well, it, it's, uh, I must say, different. Uh, it depends on the sector. Obviously, after February, um, the opportunity space for social investors uh, has shrank dramatically. And uh, I think that a lot of social entrepreneurs will suffer in the nearest future. But um, mostly entrepreneurs uh, whose activity is connected uh, with uh, so-called secondary demands, so it's culture, sports, entertainment, mm -hmm. and uh, so on. Some sectors uh, like education, healthcare, uh, kids learning. Yeah, it will be. It will uh, stay stable. It will continue to work uh, because people have to eat, need to eat something to heal and to learn. And uh, yeah, I think that some sectors even will grow up. Uh, especially, for example, in uh, eternal tourism, yeah, because of uh, international uh, isolation, and uh, also such fields like um, activities like uh, prod producing of wheelchairs, artificial limbs, uh, everything, sev uh, services around uh, medical nurses and uh, psychological rehabilitation. Unfortunately, they will also grow up in Russia. Yeah, Absolutely. so the situation is different. Yeah. Yeah. Sergey, you are expert in social entrepreneurship, but what do you understand under that? So can you provide your definition so we are on the same page? What is social entrepreneurship for you? Uh, yeah, I'm often asked uh, about who social entrepreneurs are. Uh, there is there is official um, definition like uh, social uh, social entrepreneurship is a business uh, aimed at solving social pro uh, problems. So uh, goal is social, but the uh, mean the instruments are from business environment. Yes, it's uh, some sort of cooperation of these two sector. Uh, I really I'm more like um, the definition like uh, change makers. So social entrepreneurs, they are really the change makers, uh, uh, people who produce social changes. They, they produce uh, progress in our society and it's really very interesting. So they invent uh, new products, they invent new services, they in, uh, invent new ideas and implement them in reality. And um, well, as uh, for example, uh, Muhammad Yunus, uh, who won Nobel Prize, uh, he invented uh, a new banking product, yes, micro lending for the poor family, and he changed life of a lot of people uh, in Bangladesh and uh, and in other countries, and uh, yeah, so 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 for me, social entrepreneurs, uh, change makers, they they produce changes for the better future. Yeah, absolutely. I think Europeans are also liking to use this word change maker. <laughs> Become yeah. a change maker. Yeah. So it's positive change, of course, what we mean. And so why is this so important to you? Why didn't you become a normal entrepreneur expert or something? Uh, well, first of all, it's really very interesting to 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 study and to research all these uh, social techniques or social engineering. Uh, it's uh, it's very interesting people with whom you communicate. They are really um, very intelligent, very very unusual sometimes. So uh, they they think different. Really, it, it, it's very interesting. But uh, if to speak more practical for me, well, I've um, uh, worked in different sectors and, for example, when I wo was working in uh, business uh, industry in a big uh, large corporation, 
Uh, it was a little bit boring for me because the main task was just to sell some technical equipment uh, more, uh, just to sell it more than in previous months. And uh, I, I didn't see a lot of sense in this. Uh, but on the contrary, on the other side, when I was working in Northern governmental organization, or for example, in uh, academic sphere, uh, you have a lot of freedom for, for a lot of space for your creativity and self-realization. It's, it's also very interesting, but there is a lack of money. And I like, I appreciate social entrepreneurship uh, because it uh, combine, uh, combines the, the freedom of creativity and financial independence, financial stability. So you are dealing with interesting tasks and you can earn money for yourself and your fam for your family and you can achieve, um, you can decide uh, actual uh, social problems i think it's it's win-win strategy <laughs> yeah but uh, you mentioned for example muhammad yanus yanus who yeah. kind of uh, spread the word of micro lending in bangladesh so can you tell us a bit about the history of social entrepreneurship in russia or a name maybe some names of <clears throat> people who initiated it like muhammad yanus in bangladesh uh, yeah, well, there are um, different reference points uh, about uh, social entrepreneurship in uh, Russia. Some believe that the first uh, Russian uh, social entrepreneurs or uh, social entrepreneur was uh, Ioan Kronstatsky. Uh, he lived uh, in the second half of uh, 19th century, and he is famous uh, for his uh, first uh, charitable uh, workhouses. So he 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 created some uh, production centers where uh, people with disabilities and representatives of different uh, vulnerable vulnerable groups were able to earn some money. So it, uh, he he was the first who um, uh, created this uh, social employment uh, model, yeah, if, if I can say so. Uh, after that, uh, when the revolution happened uh, happened in Russia, there were no social entrepreneurs because entrepreneurship was restricted. And except uh, the short period of uh, NEP, uh, new economic uh, policy in Russia, uh, so there were no social entrepreneurs at all uh, till the Soviet Union collapse. And uh, in the 1990s, uh, well, first uh, period of uh, wild capitalism uh, started, the period of um, um, accumulation of, of first capital, as we call it. And um, uh, the first uh, serious player on this uh, field appeared only in 2007. It was the fund Our Future. It was the private fund of uh, Vagita Leperov. Uh, nowadays, it's the former president of uh, the coin company. It was his um, private uh, initiative and his private money. So he decided uh, to support social entrepreneurship on federal level. The, um, the fund organized um, uh, first national competition for social entrepreneurs and, and many other initiatives, a laboratory of social entrepreneurship uh, competition and, and many other things. And yeah, so, so it was the uh, first uh, very um, uh, important um, point and much uh, much things were done by such uh, by, by by ordinary people you know by by private investors by uh, business pioneers uh, what is called just from grassroots and only in uh, 2019 uh, the state recognized that social entrepreneurs uh, exist in Russia and adopted a federal law. About so how the Russian so, government, history. <laughs> Sergey, yeah. how then the Russian government was treating and supporting social entrepreneurs once they recognize their existence? Um, well, first of all, the uh, government decided uh, its own problem because the weight of social obligation from the from uh previous period from the soviet union was very high it was very heavy and yeah the task was um the government task was to invite private initiatives private private sector into the social uh, sphere which usually was, uh, was monopolized by the state in in russia uh yeah but that's why it was uh, at a, and it still remains interest in this topic and we tried to support uh, social entrepreneurs um, i can say that uh, there are about two specialists <laughs> experts say that there are about 20, 
200 different measures of support, but but usually we uh, we count that um, government created infrastructure of support, uh, network of regional centers of uh, social innovations, uh, in, in centers of social of innovations in social sphere. Uh, there are some grants from uh, Ministry of Economy, not very high. Uh, from two to up to seven thousand dollars, just just to motivate people, motivate people to to try it. Uh, what else? They there are some support uh, with uh, rent of municipal uh, you know, real uh, real estate. Yes, uh, there are information support with advertisement uh, with uh, advertising. Um, uh, they also have, they also organize some forum conferences and uh, education. There is a free education for employees of social ventures, and uh, well, yeah, some other measures uh, also to support social enterprise. So yeah, they 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 try to support this sphere. So Sergey, would you say that Russia also? At least, I don't know how the situation is now, was supporting sustainable development goals and tried to contribute to that? Uh, well, <laughs> well, if to speak about uh, SDG, I think um, it has a very bright start uh, two or three years ago. Well, as far as you know, SDGs were adopted in 2015. Yes, and um, in Russia, it came a little bit later. Uh, I guess maybe in 2019, uh, the post of uh, president advisor was adopted, uh, Anatoly Chubais, the mm -hmm. former um, uh, head of Rusnana. Uh, he was advisor of president for social uh, sustainable development goals, but now he also is in, in immigration. <laughs> he, he lived uh, Russia and this topic of course is uh, not the, in, in mainstream. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, can, it still continues, but uh, I can say right. that it, it's rather popular in Russia. Yeah. So like concluding that SDGs are not on the prime agenda at the moment, as we can understand, unfortunately. Yeah. Unfortunately, okay. yes. Yeah. So uh, from, for the people of West, we generally hear of all these big companies from Russia. You have Gazprom and Lukoil and all these huge companies. How is their attitude towards social entrepreneurship? Are they supportive? Are they helping, financing? Uh, well, uh, big, uh, big businesses also very different. Uh, for for most of them, it's uh, social entrepreneurship. It, it, social entrepreneurship is some kind of game or another sort of charity. So it's 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 like a game for them, not very serious. But uh, yeah, there are some companies, uh, well, like uh, Luke Oil, as as you mentioned, and uh, OMK, for example. I, I also can 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 name them that uh, are rather serious in this sphere. For example, OMK they organized annual competition for social entrepreneurs, and uh, the thing is that uh, every big company in Russia has to be socially responsible. No options. Yes, which is good. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, but yeah, <laughs> you have no <noticed. laughs> uh, You have to invest money in the territory where you work, and uh, someone prefer to invest in church, in territory, in charity, in sports, or other sort of this kind. But uh, yes, uh, companies like Lukoil or OMK, they see that. Uh, they can invest with the help of social enterprises in create uh, in creating uh, new jobs, in creating new services. They see it like um, they see real uh, economical uh, effects from this activity. That's why they try to support it and work also systematically. Uh, social entrepreneurs, but but yes, um, if to speak about um, the federal level, um, interaction is uh, rather low. It's it's not very often. It's not a typical story. Right. Let's dive a little bit deeper to the social entrepreneurship landscape. Can you tell us, like, how many social entrepreneurs are there in Russia at all? And how would you describe a typical social entrepreneur? Um, uh, well, yeah, uh, as far as I know, uh, right now in federal uh, 
registry, register, registry. Uh, uh, there are about 7,500 uh, social entrepreneurs. Yes. And uh, um, they. 500. Spread uh, 7,500. 7,500. Uh, 7, 7, ah, okay, great. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, they spread rather rather differently in different regions. There there are uh, regions leaders like, for example, Moscow, Saint Petersburg, Nizhny Novgorod, uh, Ufa, Kazan, and some others. M mostly, it's uh, Central Federal District and uh, Prevolsky Federal District. Uh, as for other regions, uh, it's not a widespread story, and the average number of social entrepreneurship is about maybe one hundred. 150 social entrepreneurs in, in, in one region. Uh, yeah, so it, it looks like this. Um, if to speak about the portrait of a social entrepreneur, uh, usually it's a woman. Uh, I know the proportion in social well, entrepreneurship yeah. <laughs> is, is about uh, 70 to 30. So 70% of women, or women, 30% uh, of uh, men. Uh, in this sector, it, it, it's so it's usual for all social sphere in Russia. Uh, usually, um, uh, with high education, married uh, with one or two, or, or even sometimes even three children, uh, with um, uh, wide, uh, with with big uh, administrative or public experience. Uh, usually, it's former uh, directors or leaders of uh, libraries, schools, or local authorities, uh, women with a lot of energy who, who, who wants uh, to work for themselves, uh, but with low. Meaning. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, ask <laughs> or comment what, what do you want to say. Yeah. Right. Yeah, right. yeah the, the, this is the typical portrait. The so. Typical. Okay, yeah. I see. And but but the social entrepreneur has a lot of sectors, angles. So, what would you think is the most popular field of social entrepreneurs in Russia? Uh, well, I can say on first place. Uh, it's the education and primarily education. So everything is what is connected with uh, kids and family. Different kinder, private kindergartens, uh, uh, programs for uh, how how to read fast, how to learn English uh, from three years <laughs> and more. So everything, yeah, connected with education. Uh, on the second place, um, uh, I think it's uh social services and uh yeah programs um uh, nurses uh services for old people services uh for people with disabilities uh private boarding uh houses also very popular now we have a burst of uh private boarding houses for for for, for old people <clears throat> in russia i think this is the second place on the third place different models of employment Again, for people with disabilities, for mothers with kids, lonely mothers with kids and others, or for orphans. Uh, on the fourth place, uh, it's a sport and everything um, around a healthy way of life, uh, rehabilitation, tourism also growing very fast. And on the fifth, I think it's uh, cultural projects, um, preservation of traditions, drama, theaters, uh, hand, handicrafts, so so on. So I think this is top five. Yeah. I suggest let's watch some video about them so we can see who are these people yeah. who do good in Russia. Th then at least I can believe it because till now I haven't yeah. seen any. <laughs> okay, let's watch. There are so many wonderful projects in Russia, and this is just the top of an iceberg, the most popular and famous ones. Let's start! The first tour company in Russia specializing in tourism for disabled travelers since 2004 – Liberty. 
Founders Natalia Gasparian and Maria Bondor provide tours for foreign wheelchair travelers in St. Petersburg, Moscow and other Russian cities. They also assist Russian people with disabilities traveling around the world. The company is the recognized leader in the area of inclusive tourism, winner of the award Impulse Dabra, an official Russian tour operator, member of European Network of Accessible Tourism. A striking example of social entrepreneurship focused on socialization disabled people through tourism. Great idea and great company. For more information, visit their website. Kalomne Fruit Candy Historical Museum and Modern Production of Fruit Candy by Russian Historic Recipes Natalia Nikitina and her friend Yelena Dmitrieva established Kalomne's Museum of Forgotten Flavors in 2009. Nowadays, it's a big creative cluster of Kolomna Passat, which includes several museums, one factory and a cafeteria. Their enterprises have created hundreds of jobs and each museum welcomes over 50,000 visitors annually. Souvenirs sold in the museum shops range from boxes of Kolomna Pastila, gems to herbal teas and traditional breads. When you will be in Russia, Kolomna is not far away from Moscow and you can easily spend a day there. Think about it. Charity Shop is a network of charitable shops with more than 50 containers for collecting clothes from the citizens. Daria Alexeyeva opened her first charitable shop in 2014. She asked friends to hand over unnecessary clothes, selected the best and offered for sale. Later on, Daria created the fund Second Brief. Today, the fund has about 50 points of reception of clothes for six charity shops in Moscow, Kostroma and Yaroslav. More than 300 tons of clovers per year pass through this structure. Forbes magazine included Daria into annual rating 30 under 30. Wonderful and very actual project. Coca-Bella – cream honey production in small Russian village Mali Turish near Yekaterinburg. Guzel Sanjapova saw the employment problem in her native village and decided to solve it with the help of social business. Together with her father, they decided to produce cream honey by adding berries to make it less sweet and tender. She gave jobs to mostly old people of this village. She built a playground for kids and has started to develop ecotourism there. Not long ago, there was a big rock concert and now they have a built community center. Guzel revives the Mali Turish. Very inspiring story how one small girl can save her own village. And finally, on the first place, man with iron willpower, Raman Aranin from Kaliningrad. Raman was a military pilot, but then he fell down while paragliding. The result is an almost complete lack of ability to move independently. But he didn't give up. Together with colleagues, he modernized existing wheelchairs, making them suitable for off-road, to be able to go to the forest or anywhere you want. Raman opened the Observer Company. Now he plans to build a new plant in Kaliningrad, creating new jobs for disabled wheelchair users. Raman had already helped to equip for people with disabilities more than 15 airports, 8 specialized beaches, several museums, university buildings, and so on. Absolutely amazing man who stays free even in a wheelchair and helps others to overcome obstacles. <laughs> <laughs> this was yeah. very very good. <laughs> yeah, the first question uh, would be: Okay, are are these organizations still active? Yes, they are still on board. Uh, this, this is uh, it was one of my projects on, on YouTube channel three years ago. I I've recorded such small episodes about social entrepreneurs and for social entrepreneurs with tips, rating, news, and and so on. And yeah, when I um, uh, prepared to our dialogue, uh, I wanted to, to to create a new rating, but then I realized that. Yes, this is this is this is the leader still three years past, and uh, yeah, it's a little bit a problem because uh, we don't see 
see any new names uh, on the federal um, on the federal level on federal agenda i'm absolutely sure that there are, there are a lot of names on regional level on municipal levels mm -hmm. but if to speak about the whole country uh, who can represent russia yes <laughs> this is top five it's absolutely actual uh -huh. And Sergey, do you see any possibility for international cooperation with the social entrepreneurs in Russia? Uh, well, it's uh, it's uh, really hard uh, right now because you know there is a uh, law about uh, foreign agency and mm -hmm. yeah, foreign finance. It, it's a little bit risky nowadays, but uh, you can easily cooperate with these people just on private level and uh, to. Uh, I know that um, uh, a lot of people want to communicate with social entrepreneurs from from Europe, from United States, from other uh, other countries, just in order to change experience and uh, to to share best practices. So I think that on personal level, yes, uh, they will they will be happy to to to, to talk and to 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 share their experiences. But as for institutional cooperation and especially. I'm not talking uh, about investments. It's it's a little bit hard right, right now. Okay, mm -hmm. but but you have traveled and you have also lived in different countries in different places. What, in your opinion, would be the key differences of social entrepreneurs in Europe and in Russia? Mm -hmm. um, well, mm, if to speak about main differences, um, first of all. Um, I think gender. I've already mentioned because in in Russia it's eighty, sometimes seventy, or sometimes eighty percent of uh, social entrepreneurs are, we, are women. In Europe, from my point of view, maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong, and, and uh, it's I I would say it's fifty fifty or maybe sixty to forty. I don't know exactly, but I I, I see this uh, difference. Um, another thing, it's it's the it's the attitude uh, towards business um, uh, because in Russia attitude to social entrepreneurship just just to any any business it's it's like uh, my personal fortress my business is my personal fortress it's something very private uh, all others uh, have to stay away it's uh, Business love silence. Uh, this is this is our cow, and we milk it. <laughs> you know, such a <laughs> Russian verb, a proverb. And uh, yeah, it, it's really very different from, for example, with um, European practice. When when people start business, they try to involve as much people as possible mm -hmm. because they prefer co cooperation style, and they prefer some sharing models. Uh, yeah, this the, 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 this is really very very uh, bright um, difference because well co competition of course is everywhere but uh, cooperation helps you to to grow much faster uh, and the, the third uh, difference mm, i would say it's um, ambitions uh, because uh, w when you start business in Europe, for example, in Germany or in Poland, uh, you have to establish it as a global project because, because you have to compete with, uh, with, with the whole Europe. Yes, it, it's one um, common space uh, with a circle of goods, ideas, people, money, and, and it, it's... It, it's uh, very tiny. Uh, while in Russia, the influence of uh, global um, globalization, the influence of globalization is is not so vivid. Uh, that's why um, entrepreneurs are more satisfied with local levels. Yes, you, well, the city is level. Big enough as well, if you spread <laughs> yeah, the yeah, nation, yeah, yeah, it yeah. can be enough. <laughs> Yes, so ju just uh, just to, to to stable income to 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 reach some level and and that's enough. They don't want to create I don't know global transnational corporations or something like this. So I think the the lack of entrepreneurial ambition is, is one more uh, key difference and. Um, uh, what else? Uh, well, many many, many difference. Uh, uh, well, the last uh, what I want to mention, of course, the the difference towards towards the government. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, because in Europe you can um, work and do not face government at all, uh, at all until you uh, break the law. Uh, in Russia, it's not possible. If you want to grow, you must be friends with government. You must take part in all these round tables with officials, uh, joint working groups, hotels with mayors, governors, and uh, this is absolutely obligatory rituals. So, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. I think this is this is the main specifics, the main, the main difference. Right, and I, I, I think that there is more future, at least at the moment, for social entrepreneurs in Russia inside the country to grow inside, right, and outside anyway. And how would you say can we support social entrepreneurship inside the country? I mean, how people can support it and make it grow so that more people would get involved and create social businesses instead of just doing normal business? Mm, well, raising, <clears throat> raising more awareness about it or more education for more entrepreneurs or how do you see that? Uh, yeah, ju just, um, uh, I think that um, try not to close doors for the Russian people. <laughs> I think that this this is a, uh, the, my my main message because uh, try not to 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 cancel yes Russian social entrepreneurship as. There are some discussions mm -hmm. about this right now in political uh, among po uh, politicians in different countries. Uh, just don't close the gates. We we we, we will do everything. We will create uh, very productive and uh, uh, ambitious uh, services. Just give this opportunity, for example, to 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 take part in international competitions. I know that there are a lot of uh, international competitions. Uh, <clears throat> in the world for social entrepreneurship from from ashoka from um, echo green from schwab foundations from 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 many others and uh yeah if people want they have um they 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 uh, have to get this chance uh, to 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 grow into international level i think this is the, the, it, it will be enough absolutely nowadays Right. Well, from our side, we don't close doors. The top five, which we've seen today, most uh, well, well, then welcome join our impact community chamomile and uh, connect with us. So, absolutely. Yeah. And learn from our experience if they want to. So, <laughs> and, and since you have been teaching so long, I mean, since, the, since 89, at least the good old times when everything was different, what would you tell to encourage the would-be entrepreneurs, with both in Russia and the rest of the world, to choose for social entrepreneurs? Uh, well, yeah, I'm absolutely sure that uh, with time, uh, the whole business will become social uh, because environmental and social uh, demands or restrictions, uh, they will only increase. Yeah, and um, uh, well, I'm also sure that everyone uh, at least once a time, one once in life, uh, should try to establish its own impact startup, because this is absolutely um, uh, the, the the instrument number one for personal growth. You will forget about all these uh, self awareness trainings. You will learn, <laughs> uh, yeah, you will you you will uh, learn how to work and teach uh, ten times faster than you. Uh, used to it will swallow your time and you will learn how to deal with problems how to to communicate with people how to see possibilities instead of obstacles and uh, how to earn money and uh, when when income depends on your uh, personal efforts and uh, yeah well because career some, uh, career positions uh, they are limited with the age and skills but impact startups they are always open for for, for everyone so yeah try it. it reward yourself with with this uh, life experience life changing experience that's brilliant. Thank yeah. Thanks, Sergey. <laughs> <laughs> I can only agree and say yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was <laughs> even thinking about it while he was speaking, that this is amazing what you are saying. I mean, everybody <laughs> should hear of it and everybody should at least try it out once. 
Yeah, right. I really believe in impact, right? Not to forget the impact not only on yourself, but of course you can also create positive impact on people and environment. And, so. and the whole world needs it at this moment. Also, Absolutely. just if you look at the environmental impact uh, in Russia, I mean, with the with the melting of the ice and things like that. So I think there will be a huge mm. demand for social entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. Sergey, how can our audience support you? Uh, well, uh, as I've said, I uh, have to leave Russia. Now I live in Bulgaria. Fortunately, I have a job in Europe. Uh, I'm, I'm lucky. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm also interested and I'm open in expanding my professional connections here in, in Europe because previously I was focused on, focused on Russia. So I would be happy to give, uh, to, to cooperate also to maybe to, to uh, give some lectures or webinars or seminars for European universities, uh, for accelerators, for social startups, and uh, maybe a competition of startups. So yeah, if, if you like uh, what, I, what I'm talking about, if you, uh, if, if you think it's interesting, so yeah, let, let, let's talk and cooperate. I'm open for, for you. And how people can find you? Uh, yeah. And where? <laughs> where? I mean, uh, to contact you, to contact you. <laughs> you can find me in LinkedIn, in uh, Facebook, and I also have a personal website, uh, spsocial.ru. There is an English page, and there, there are my contacts, my email. So I think uh, I will... I will leave my contacts under this video, <laughs> as it's usually <laughs> said. So, yeah, let's keep in touch. Great. Thanks so much. Sergey, time is running out, but we want to ask you one more call to action message to our global audience. Mm -hmm. What would you like to say? Well, I want to say that um, life is short. Uh, it can change dramatically just in one night. Yeah. And uh, don't be afraid. Just uh, don't, don't be afraid. Don't wait uh, for better times. Just try to create something uh, which you will pass to your children and try to to try to change uh, our reality for, for, for the better. Yes, that this is this is my call to action. <laughs> yeah. I think everyone is becoming very wise and consciousness is changing, which is good, which yeah. is good. So thank you, Sergey, for this uh, very nice message. And yeah, joining us you. today, of course. <laughs> yeah. We hope to see you somewhere in Europe soon in person. That yeah. would be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. One more time. Bye for now, Sergey. Thank you for joining us. Bye bye. Okay. Bye bye. Dear viewers, with this, we finished the 18th episode of season five. The coming two weeks, I think we have a break, right? Yeah. And do we need to stop our non-stop 18 <laughs> episodes of season five? I think it's good for everyone, for you and for us. And please remember to subscribe on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Swiss Impact. So you will be always up to date on whatever is happening in the world and how can you create positive impact in any circumstances. And we Im invite all impactful businesses who are seeking investments or any kind of support to come and join us. Just apply using the web uh, email address apply at iisolutions.ch yeah, or just go to impactinvesting.tv and you will oh, yeah, find everything <laughs> what you need to know. <laughs> exactly. And a plan, maybe we see you as our guest. Absolutely. And for now, remember that you got more when you give back. So always invest with impact. Bye, Bye for, for now. now. See you in a couple of weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, we hope you enjoyed this episode of TV show, Swiss Impact with Energies. Make sure you check out the next one. And also find us on Facebook, LinkedIn, Spotify, podcasts and any of your favorite social media places and please subscribe to our channel so you know when we release new episodes and also leave us some feedback to help us grow this awesome impact community and join it 
We look forward to sharing the next episodes with you. And until then, you get more when you give back. So always invest with impact.